speaking with Stephen Fry, actor, comedian, Emmy Award winner. The list goes on and on. Poet and tonight a debater. Stephen, great to have you here at the Monk Thank Debates. Thank you, Rabiot. Pleasure. I've uh, wanted this to happen for years. Uh, you are a dear friend of Christopher Hitchens, who is yes. a dear friend of this debating series. Yeah. And Christopher always said to us, you have to get Stephen onto your stage. His benign, capricious, mischievous spirit hovers over any debate, I <laughs> exactly. feel. He has become the god of debate, essentially. He has, he has. Now, why uh, did you feel that it was important uh, to participate in this debate? You're a busy guy. You've got a lot of things happening. You've got mm. a, a show in uh, the Shaw Festival. Uh, well, that helped. Up. The fact that I was in the right <laughs> landmass and even the right side of the parallel just... Uh, uh, meant that it was easier than if I'd had to take the decision to come to London, though I think I probably would have come mm -hmm. if I'd been in London, because I think it's a fascinating subject. Uh, I came because I think it's very important to try and suggest that any anti-PC rhetoric isn't entirely the property of the right. Mm -hmm. I, I characterise myself as a soft lefty, a flaccid, flabby <laughs> lefty, um, not a progressive or a, a, a you know a, a street marching socialist but someone who's always tended towards a liberal outlook um, and I'm aware of, uh, of how under under threat that such an outlook is and also how it is regarded by the new right as being in charge uh, that we who were once the outsiders knocking in and being subversive and transgressive and saying naughty things and refusing to toe the line of authority, are now considered, particularly in academia, which is not where I work, but I'm familiar with it and spend quite a lot of time and have a lot of friends in academia, uh, that seems to be the battleground now, where once it was a battleground where the, the left were trying to infiltrate, it's now one where the right are trying to infiltrate. And um, I think it's important that for the same reasons the left were allowed at least to, 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 to make their fuss and to shout and demonstrate and so on uh, in the days of the 60s, you know, post-68. So it is important that the right is. After all, if people are going to say that the purpose of PC is to celebrate diversity, then d diversity <laughs> includes diversity of opinion. Mm -hmm. And if it doesn't, it's meaningless. Mm -hmm. What other elements of the so-called politically correct movement uh, do you think are, are, I don't know, undermining our sense of shared efficacy, uh, a culture that we celebrate in terms of its openness? This, uh, There's an element of that. In, uh, uh, actually, the free speech side of it is, is important, but it's not what I would emphasize. I, I think I, I would emphasize that for all the things I hate about PC stylistically and just viscerally, mm -hmm. sanctimony, piety, self-righteousness, resentment, anger, uh, orthodoxy, and that kind of thing, um, accusation, denunciation, all, all these things, shaming, all those are vile. But I, I'm not saying I'd put up with them, but it's not as important as the fact that it simply doesn't work. Mm. It, it does the opposite of work. It's a recruiting sergeant for the right. Uh, uh, all it takes is a bit of imagination to think, well, okay, a white young man of 18 is going to university and he's confused and uh, not necessarily woke in a political sense. What's he going to think of all this stridency and this shouts of white privilege here and, and, and heteronormative here and uh, just this jargonistic claptrap. It's so stupid. I think that's the point. It's just dumb. In chess, there's a, which I used to be a, a, a lover of, there's an old, there was an old saying, um, someone like, I, I don't know, it was one of the, Max Oiver, one of the Dutch players, I think, who said, uh, the best move in chess is not the best chess move. It's the move your opponent least wants you to play. Mm. That's the best move. And that's, you know, goes all the way back to the art of war, you know. Mm -hmm. you, you, you must put, put yourself in the place of the person you want to persuade or to defeat. Mm -hmm. And I don't think PC does that. I think PC is, as I say, it's, it's just a recruiting sergeant. It just would make me, I, I think, if I was 17 or 18 now going to university, I would think, sub that. I mean, I'm a natural contrarian, and like Christopher mm. Hitchens, a, a natural transgressive. I... I, I want to shake things up, I, I want to disagree with what I consider orthodoxy. Mm -hmm. I'm heterodox. Mm -hmm. um, as a matter of, almost a matter of pride, you, you just don't go with the flow, you mm -hmm. try and stand alone. And so I think 
the left, if it wants to achieve all the things that it should, and I mean, I'm, I hope I wouldn't have to repeat that I'm against homophobia, transphobia, Islamophobia, all the phobias, xenophobia against bigotry, racism, intolerance of all kinds. But it's how you achieve the golden aim of, 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 mm. of making a more tolerant society and mm. prescribing language and, and forcing people to use uncomfortable and silly phrases. Apart from anything else, people are too witty. One, one of the huge errors people make on the left is they underestimate the smartness of the enemy, as it were. It may be that the Trumps of this world don't read the same sacred liberal arts texts that we regard as the important building blocks of an intelligence. That doesn't mean they're not cunning and smart. It really doesn't. It's so stupid to underestimate them, as history shows. Mm -hmm. Really dumb. One of the arguments uh, you will note out here tonight is that um, there are different social goals. Uh, freedom of speech, the assertion of individual choice may be one, but on the other hand, people say we're living in very diverse, complex societies. Inclusion should trump some of <laughs> yeah, it's unfortunate the unfortunate verb to use. use that. I can't yeah, use I know, there's a difficult one for Yes, yes, you have to find <laughs> a new in, verb. Inclusion should be the primary goal for institutions, uh, maybe for societies, because uh, by bringing people together through a respect for diversity and difference, we're building healthier, stronger societies. You know the line. Yeah, I, I know the line, and of course it's right, but if you think the way to do it is to force people to, to use a language and to, uh, to recognize a, um, a kind of preposterous Laputin post-structuralist hermeneutics on the one side or a, a, a sort of just a flabby hopefulness on the other, I, I, I don't think it's right. I mean, you know, let's... Let's just look at the human wit and see. I, I can remember I taught in a school before I went to university, just a sort of job uh, 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 while I was in my gap year. And it was around the time that it was decided that words, the word handicap would not be used, but challenged. And, and uh, this was sort of in the papers. It was an early example of political correctness. I'm talking about 1979. Um, and I remember these school kids. <laughs> One of them fell over, another of them pointed at him and went, challenged! You just immediately co-opt the word for your wicked humour. And rightly so. I applaud. You know. And if someone wants to shout faggot, I don't care as a gay man. I know I'm supposed to, but I'm supposed to care on behalf of p people who are supposedly weaker than me. And I think it's the most patronising thing in the world. Hmm. It's exactly the same political correctness that I grew up with, which then was a kind of religious political correctness which was people complaining about television programs because there was swearing or violence or nudity. Mm. I'm not shocked myself. It's just the vulnerable young minds you see. Oh, fuck that. That's just not good enough. Yeah. It really is. Um, and and, and that's, that's my objection. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's denouncing from the pulpit. It's, it, Russia has political correctness. I mean, it, Russia's political correctness is that you can't say Tchaikovsky was gay. Mm -hmm. You know, it's... it's Political correctness, there's right-wing political correctness. Mm -hmm. To use the word redneck is considered offensive mm -hmm. uh, and so on. So it, it's not something that actually only belongs. It's, it's, a, it's a way of shutting down debate. It's a way of formalizing. I mean, you've only got to read Darkness at Noon to see at its most extreme this idea. Of the, it always starts off with an ideal and a hopeful goal equality of society is how communism began the french revolution fraternity you know equality fraternity liberty all these wonderful things it ended up with the, this committee for national security in the french revolution actually had a law passed which meant that you could take a piece of paper saying citoyen du roc uh, is an enemy of the revolution and and put it in the central square on a post was a denun and that person would be arrested. Hmm. It's basically the same as tweeting it. It's, it's, it's exactly the, the same idea. It's a denunciation, a shaming, without evidence, an assertion. And all these things are, are done for the best possible reasons. Um, as Thomas Cranmer, who wrote the, uh, the Book of Common Prayer uh, forward, uh, to, uh, you know, the founder of the Ang Anglican Church, really, he, he said, there was not anything by the wit of man devised that hath not been in in time, in whole or in part, corrupted. Hmm. And, and it's, no, it's, it's all very well to say how noble the ideals were, because they're always noble. 
but you, you end up with the pigs wearing trousers in Orwellian phrase. Mm -hmm. and, and that's what's happened. It, it, essentially, the, the left wing won the battle for the campus and is now middle-aged baby boomers who are the left wingers running it. And they're wearing the trousers and they're insisting what is true and what is not true, and what is acceptable and what is not acceptable in the name of diversity and inclusion mm -hmm. and equality and all the good things. A lot of bad things are being done. Yeah. And it's delaying the day when people are more included and more diversity is welcomed, I think. That's the problem. It's empowering the enemy. Final question, Stephen. Where do you think this debate goes from here? Are we, is this a kind of paroxysm that passes uh, in the same way that we did have this debate in the late 80s and 90s on college campuses? Mm. Uh, you could even say, look, are there reverberations to 1968? I, yeah, don't, I don't know. Um, or do you think there's, th th this is something much more fundamental that's going on, a new tribalism that's emerging in society? Well, I, I, I don't know is the answer. I, I've given up any confidence in being able to predict the future. I couldn't have predicted what the, the world would be like now three years ago. Mm -hmm. right? And I'm not alone in that. Nobody could. And nobody did. And people who pretend they did, show me the article in which they wrote, you know, what the state of the world would be like now. No one has done it. And, and the faster and more complex it gets, the more unpredictable it gets, the more chaotic, the, the more turbulent the more non-linear the equation is, mm. if you like. Um, so it's very difficult to, to predict. I would only say that within that, there are cycles within the turbulence and so on. And I'm a great believer in the Roman idea of the rota fortunae, the wheel of fortune. You know, because I can remember when in my country, uh, Tony Blair in, in America, Clinton, um, and around Europe, social democrats were absolutely in power. It was an unquestioned... And it seemed an inevitable thing that that's how politics mm -hmm. would be, somewhere between sort of centre-left, sometimes mm -hmm. sort of centre-right. But the wheel went down, and now they're at the very bottom, and what's at the very top is quite the opposite. Mm -hmm. But I do believe that means that what's at the top is on the way down too. <laughs> so I'm not, in that sense, too pessimistic. And I do believe in humans and humanity. <laughs> um, uh, the best thing that could ever happen for the tribalism and the nationalism, of course, is, uh, is an invasion from another planet. Because yes, then, so then, you know, in the same way that the first astronauts looked back at the Earth and said, mm. God, the weird thing is you can't see any borders. There's no mm -hmm. 49th parallel visible. <laughs> There's no border between Germany and France or between Russia and China. It's just all one landmass. And similarly, the, you know, the Martians or Venusians come and attack us, and suddenly we're not going to worry about, uh, oh, but you're a Catholic or you're a Jew or you're Islamic. I mean, please, it's just... Uh, Mm -hmm. That's what we need, is a wider cause to belong <laughs> to. <laughs> Intergalactic war may yeah. just be our salvation. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Stephen, thank you so much for your time today. We look forward to your appearance on the stage tonight. Thank you. It's a fun. pleasure.